Globally, 2020 has been an exceptionally challenging year across geographies as well as practices. And clearly academia has not been spared. While the events of that year revealed limits in teaching approaches in the old normal, technology supported pedagogies had already been emerging for several years. While not an isolated instance, the COVID-19 pandemic has been a potent catalyst, not only for ad hoc adaptation, but also for long-term change and improvement. Teaching with technology has been developing over decades in academic institutions, including focused engagements such as Purdue Global and the Open University. Even if not formally designed as blended learning until recently, the integration of technologies and teaching has also become a common practice and gaining ground even in more traditional universities. Recording lectures and sharing resources via online repositories might be considered rudimentary forms. Even outside of a global pandemic, the motivations behind the adoption of technology for teaching are varied. Conan Patandura suggested that a useful way of looking at blended learning is through a deficit enhancement model that compares two drivers for its commencement. In a deficit model, blended learning techniques are used to substitute what would otherwise be a face-to-face -face experience, perhaps due to lack of resources, financial, spatial, too many students, not enough teachers. In the enhancement model, blended learning platforms are used to complement or replace existing teaching practices, not out of necessity, but because the new platforms can offer an experience that is superior or can augment face-to-face -face teaching alone. In 2015, the Flexible Academic Programming Project was established to address the emerging challenges of designing and delivering quality teaching and learning experiences for both students and staff. In 2017, the FlexAct project examined the university's educational technology landscape and opportunities to use technology to support its current and future pedagogical needs. Following the review, the need to move to a next generation learning management system was clearly identified as a critical outcome and became a priority for the university to address. A major project was commissioned in early 2018 to review and assess the available options. In consultation with the university's students and staff, Canvas was assessed as offering an improved user experience. This software allowed the opportunity to incorporate other digital tools through the LTI integration with other educational technologies, such as those discussed in this paper. All these include extensible pedagogical features and flexible functionality within the LMS itself, and through external third-party tools integration. As of 2021, the university has established 6,887 virtual spaces, including subjects and communities, in the Canvas platform, most revealed from the content of the previous LMS with significant changes. The new LMS is fully integrated with key staff and student information, including enrollments, sanctions, class allocations, calendar entries, assessment groups, assessment weightings, subject outcomes, and exam shell creations and allocation. In addition, Custom tools have also been developed, including management of groups, staff roles, copy forward of subjects, auto-publish, merging and cohort linking, external users, and enrollment change log. While the initial challenges of teaching online center on mastering technologies, quickly following this, implications for pedagogy, learning design, and student engagement became clear. Improvised distance learning also revealed other challenges ranging from digital burnout increased instances of academic misconduct, inequity and lack of engagement, all of these calling for new approaches. The 2020 move to online teaching at the University of Melbourne was undertaken with the support of a number of learning and teaching focus groups across the institution. These include centrally supported groups with a focus on technologies for teaching and on pedagogy research alongside a number of discipline-focused teaching and learning groups. The Built Environments Learning and Teaching Group within the Faculty of Architecture, Building and Planning at the University of Melbourne, is an academic group focused on the sustained improvement of learning in built environments disciplines. Established in mid-2018, the group applies creative problem solving and design-led approaches, evidence-based research methodologies, and project-focused consultancy to improve teaching quality and student engagement. This work draws on the skill sets of BELT group members, designers, and researchers from multiple disciplines. The Faculty of Architecture, Building and Planning is the location and inspiration and also the beneficiary of focused built environments learning and teaching research. 
The sudden exodus from campus in March 2020 challenged Belt to support educators who were thrown into a very unfamiliar world. The group drew on previous work to quickly develop a set of online criteria for subject sites that were hosted by the coincidentally new learning management system. Belt were tasked with supporting staff under pressure, most of whom sought to translate their familiar on-campus experiences into an online mode quickly and with minimal change. During this period, therefore, part of Belt's task was to develop ways to understand, communicate and support new student needs and approaches. Over this period, the DIA framework and its diagram developed through several iterations, while also engaging with a global conversation that was identifying similar challenges driven by COVID-19. Refinement of the DIA was informed by moving between two modes of engagement with colleagues, developing new resources and guidance, and translating and testing emerging practices. The development of a diagram as a spatialization of a selective abstraction helped to inform the conceptualization of the challenge, clearer communications of its elements during consultations with staff, and focused development of resources and support. The diagram was designed to focus on a student-centered learning agenda, learning engagement and a sense of belonging, surrounded by interlocking teaching activities, delivery of learning objects and resources, student-to-student -student and student-to-staff interaction activities, and guided low-stakes assessment activities. A need for their effective integration, coordination, is also identified, all within a context including well-being, a supportive learning environment, Details of its development have been outlined elsewhere and implications for coordination published. The elements of the DIA model also informed the development of the Bell website, which continued to be refined as new practices emerged. The teacher-facing guidance for teaching online section highlighted the key teaching activities, delivery, interaction and assessment, with examples of practices and things to consider. The site also celebrated innovative approaches our colleagues were making across the faculty. This section had 3,900 views over 2020, a high rate for a faculty with 170 academic staff. Most importantly, the page both guided and was informed by many hundreds of teaching-focused consultations as part of the redesign of over 400 subject sites. The remainder of this presentation will cover three examples of emerging issues, technologies and practices prompted by the experiences of 2020 through the lens of DIA. These include site visits, teacher presence and performance online, and learning in virtual environments. Site visits are a crucial tool within the built environment educators toolbox, as they can connect students with practice. They can create connections for disciplinary approaches. They offer a forum for pedagogical intervention. They strengthen the link between architectural documentation and built form. And they also provide a narrative element to sites, for example, enhancing heritage aspects. The Belt Group was fortunate to be able to draw on previous investigations of workflows for capturing and providing virtual site visits to students. These had aimed to offer staff and students experiential learning opportunities on bespoke, difficult to access or limited capacity sites. Existing research on simulated site visits shows that these options can enhance online and face-to-face -face learning experiences. And they also provide students who are unable to access site with equitable learning opportunities. With the restriction and uncertainty surrounding lockdowns in Victoria, we identified an opportunity to further develop these past investigations as virtual offerings and to develop a toolbox of virtual site visits for the ABP teachers. The process would need to accommodate the restrictions on travel, allowing academics and subject coordinators to create site visits with material, resources and technical aptitudes on hand, including any existing documentation they may have of the site that were no longer accessible. Our work delivered a series of guides suited to various educational technologies, technical skills, as well as varying access to material and resources. These approaches demonstrated ranged from embedding Google Maps into LMS page in case of limited or missing site documentation to the application of 360 imaging where site and artifact allowed. 
We were able to disseminate our findings online through a dedicated staff hub, which included examples of each method and how to incorporate them into Canvas LMS sites. Subject coordinators from various ABP disciplines, architecture, urban planning and construction management were all able to adopt the newly developed guidance on virtual site visits in order to supplement student learning resources during lockdown restrictions. Following the lifting of the restrictions in late 2020, we have seen subject coordinators continue to use their virtual site visits to supplement face-to-face -face and remote learning. In some cases, teachers have further developed these methods to offer equitable site experiences for students affected by ongoing border closures. Undeniably, quickly adopting an online model by necessity alongside reconceiving teaching and a central role for learning technologies has been extremely challenging. Those academic teachers who have embraced the change quickly notice that technology and digital media have also introduced affordances to educators and new teaching possibilities. Despite the transformative teaching practices, asynchronicity, flexibility, interactivity, enabled by modern educational technologies, criticisms of online teaching often revolve around the lack of engagement from students. This lack of engagement has been linked to a perceived loss of interpersonal aspects of teaching from a teacher's perspective. While the role of teacher performance outside of performing arts is not well documented in academic literature, other concepts such as charisma and humor are. Lin and Huang identify four elements that contribute to charisma in teaching. Knowledgeable, positive character traits such as friendliness, approachability and empathy, teaching skills and methods, and a good sense of humor. Lin also insists that the greatest learning stimulus is not necessarily about how well the class is prepared, but by the type of environment created by the teacher. Bambariu and Shokbo found that nonverbal forms of communication, including the use of emotion and body language, have been effective in students' learning. Beyond the direct impact of nonverbal forms of communication, they also suggest that these forms of communication affect the relationship that is created between the teachers and the students. Digital technologies may create a veil between the students and may limit the ability of educators to employ charisma in teaching or to communicate positive character traits such as humor and empathy effectively. Interacting through a screen may also inhibit nonverbal forms of communication for both the students and for the educators. As such, teachers who rely on charisma to teach effectively may find additional challenges in the translation of successful pedagogies from a face-to-face -to, -face to an online classroom. The DIA did, however, offer a different perspective, considering pedagogy design around the intersection of delivery, interaction and assessment can separate teaching from the environment itself. While interactions with students will change in a virtual environment, some of the human elements that have been lost can also be revived in a different form. Humor can be injected in videos, empathy can be communicated in the tone of voice and inspiration can be conveyed in recordings. Even body language and nonverbal forms of communication may be introduced in a virtual class through the creative use of video and audio capture equipment. In an attempt to demonstrate some of these ideas, Bell produced a series of videos that combine practical and technical advice to recreate some of the face-to-face -face experiences when teaching remotely. These videos were made available on the Bell website. Virtual environments can be very dry and sterile, but they do not have to be. Aligning pedagogy with affordances that virtual environments and educational learning tools offer, alongside the creative and innovative use of human attributes, can link to effective learning. When learning face-to-face, -face, built environment education typically makes use of specific spaces to support discipline-specific pedagogical culture, activities and moments. Some key physical space typologies associated with built environment educations are, one, the presentation and feedback space. This is where students present their proposal to be examined and interrogated by peers, experts, or industry professionals. Two, the exhibition space. This is where students are able to curate their work for viewing and dissemination. Three, the object-based learning space. This is where artifacts can be presented to students for interrogation. And finally, four, the collaborative working space. This is where multiple actors can participate in a learning and research activity. During 2020, 
ABP's face-to-face -face learning spaces and many resources were off limits. Our students were globally dispersed. Belt's challenge was to identify accessible tools that could help mediate learning in the virtual environments that we now occupied. Belt identified that the most requested tools were those that could support object-based learning in both 2D and 3D scenarios. Belt therefore developed support for four different platforms, Miro, Pedestal, At Studio, and Mozilla Hubs. 3D viewing platforms such as Pedestal and Sketchfab can offer the ability to create digital collections for use in virtual learning environments through the use of digital object-based interrogation. This allows students to explore digital models with features such as 360 rotational views and measuring and sectioning of 3D models. The faculty looked to 2D and 3D navigable learning environments that afforded students and teachers to interact and to experience spaces in a collaborative and social way for remote learning and teaching. A successful technology within the built environment learning space needed to provide not only the rhetoric of presentation, but also the requirements that led to ensuing discussion and assessment. Viewers as field experts, educators or student peers needed to be able to participate actively and autonomously for the interrogation of a presented digital artifact. Mozilla Hubs and Ad Studio platforms both provide a 3D environment in which learning participants, students and educators, can insert or create an artifact. This artifact can then be interrogated by others either synchronously or asynchronously. While At Studio offered features and a visual interface that was well suited to a built environment designer, Mozilla Hubs' interface supported social interactions through gamified features such as simple emoticon reactions, character avatars, and video and audio sharing capabilities. In ABP, both platforms were primarily used as an exhibition tool facilitated by subject coordinators. This is where students could present proposals and early concepts such as images, videos, and 3D objects for peers and learning participants to interrogate. While Mozilla Hubs and At Studio both resolved many of the challenges presented by remote design learning, considerable planning and setup was needed to create suitable spaces for teacher-led interactions. Because of this, in addition, Belt supported the use of Miro as a platform for digital presentation and in which artifact interrogation could take place, as well as virtual space for collaboration on live working documents. When used alongside a live audiovisual collaborative medium, such as Zoom, Miro allows viewers to become active participants in the interrogation process, providing them autonomy and real-time collaboration, as well as showing representative avatars of uh, collaborators. While many of our students and staff are able to access campus in 2021, closed international borders mean that there is a significant portion of the student cohort who remain online. This situation is not particularly stable and our city experienced a snap lockdown in February this year, just prior to the commencement of semester. Restrictions on movement and social distancing continue to change and our teaching must now be designed to be responsive to these fluid circumstances as well as to support distributed student learning in a wide range of circumstances. The University has determined that teaching and learning for the first half of the year of 2021 will make use of three modes, on campus, fully online and dual delivery. Dual delivery subjects are taught in two modes blended mode, blending online and campus-based activities for students who are able to attend campus and entirely online for students who cannot. Dual delivery brings with it some good opportunities to test blended synchronous or high flex approaches. It also brings some particular challenges, not least of these being concerns about equity, real and perceived for students in both modes. In preparation for the semester, Belt drew once more on the DIA model and its diagram and elements, as well as recent publications on hybrid teaching models to prepare for the anticipated challenge. The Belt Guide for Dual Delivery highlights some key considerations for staff preparing for the semester, focusing on learner equity and access, cohort building and staff and student perceptions, needs for clear communication and a shared language. 
It's important that all students are supported to work toward the intended learning outcomes or the ILOs with equivalent, perhaps not the same, preparation for these and their assessment. There are certainly many aspects of 2020 that will not be quickly forgotten and outcomes from the catalyst delivered by COVID-19 will remain with us for some time. Of these, the opportunity to discuss and interrogate teaching approaches and to identify and test the elements that focus and support good learning is a central and valuable artefact. The DIA frame framework and its diagram that was developed in response to the challenges of 2020 offers not only a framework and a model, but also a lens. It helps us to test our responses to new teaching challenges and to support staff and student cohorts that are still distributed between the campus and online.